Your project's underway, work's getting done, and lots of things are happening. So how do you communicate that to key stakeholders? That's where the status report comes in. A status report is a simple document that communicates the team's accomplishments, what's in progress, what's next, and what challenges are anticipated. It keeps people informed about the project status, especially for those that aren't involved on a regular basis, but still might wanna be in the know. These reports provide visibility and transparency, and if you're lucky, will save you from a few meetings. Below this video, you'll find an example of a status report, along with two templates that you can take back and use for your projects. So let's talk about how we can use these, starting with an example status report. First off, what information goes into the status report? We like to use three inputs. The first is the project plan, which is typically in Excel or your project management software. This captures what was completed, what's in progress, and what's coming up. The second input is the information from the status meetings with the project team. And third, we collaborate with the core project team members to make sure we all agree on the content. With that information, we prepare our status report that communicates everything that happened that week. The picture you're seeing here is the format for each week's report. The same time each week, we copy the previous week's report and update it. Let's take a closer look at the template. Starting at the top, we'll put in our project name, then the reporting period, and your name. Here's the spot for your current status. This is a quick, at-a-glance, health check for the project. Green is on track, orange is for at risk if your projects might be slipping. Red is for high risk when your project has risks that prevent you from staying on time or on budget. Blue is for when your project is on hold. I do want to point out that this status should be accurate. I know how tough it might be to stop and say, you know, we're going from green on track to red high risk, but we want to call that out now before the problems become bigger and more difficult to correct. If you're changing the status here, have a conversation with your steering committee and your sponsor about why this is happening and what can be done to get back on track. Next, we have the project schedule. This is a quick, at-a-glance look at the phases of the project, not a full, in-depth view of a Gantt chart. We have some phases in the template already, but you'll want to replace them with the phases from your project. Then we get into the body of the report, and the first part is the accomplishments section. This is where you list everything accomplished during this reporting period. Typically, we start with a past tense verb like completed the project charter. Start with the big accomplishments and end with the smaller stuff. We want to use this section to showcase all of the great work that's been completed. Next, we have the work that's in progress. This is what the project team is currently working on and has not completed yet. We start with an ING verb, like working on the communications plan. Then we have next steps. These are things that are right around the corner and are started with a verb, like schedule a meeting with the advisory committee. And last, and this is very important, is the risks and mitigation section. This is where you want to list anything that might possibly impact the delivery or quality of your project. Remember in your project charter how you outlined risks that might occur? This section is to list risks that are occurring right now or might occur. These are the risks that are currently on your mind and should include your mitigation strategy for these risks. For example, a risk might be short timelines to complete the project. And mitigation is to hold daily stand-up meetings to ensure the project is on track. There's one item not shown in this format, but might be helpful, and that's the appendix. This is where you might include additional data about this week's report, such as screenshots of a new feature that was developed, additional reading on some new piece of equipment, etc. Use your own judgment here. Now that you have the report, what do you do with it? 
Hopefully, either your project charter or communications plan says what you're doing with your status report. But typically, you'll be sending this on a regular basis, usually weekly, to your project sponsor, steering committee, project team, and perhaps key stakeholders that might need to be informed about the project. You'll probably send it via email, and in the body of the email, I recommend including a few key highlights from the report. We have an email template below that can get you started. So it might seem like a bit of work up front, but once this becomes a standard practice for your department and your sponsors and stakeholders and project team all know what to expect on your projects, it will start to pay dividends. The status reports are one part of what happens in the execution phase. If you want to see what else is happening in execution, check out our website at epmo.stcoe.net.